Hi, hello everybody. Hope everybody is having what is the beginning of a great weekend for you all on this Friday evening here in sunny and warm Columbia. It's evening time, so it's moonlit Columbia, but always warm as usual. I uh, want to give my take on the uh, Ryan Garcia Oscar Duarte fight. Uh, haven't seen Duarte a whole lot, uh, ha but I have seen him and, I have, and I've watched him some. Uh, so I'm going to try to give you my take on, I'm going to give you a couple of possibilities to what's going to happen, then I'm going to say what I believe is going to happen, and then we're going to go into a cautionary tale that trainers and managers uh, and guiders of fighters today have just lost uh, through ignorance. Uh, it's not through stupidity. It's through utter ignorance and not knowing the history of the sport of boxing. Uh, and I'm going to give you a story that comes from hitting home with me. Uh, and it hit me hard because the same guys that trained me were training a world champion almost at the same exact time many many years ago so uh, not at the same time but very very close to the same time uh, within a year of this guy losing the heavy WBA heavyweight championship so uh, but we're going to talk about this this fight here for a second uh, first scenario, Ryan comes in, overwhelms him, he's got that jab on him, using his height effectively, not allowing Duarte to use what everybody considers a disadvantage, which I consider an advantage of being the shorter guy, but Ryan stops Duarte's advantage of being shorter. I'll state it like that. Uh, and he either catches him on the side of the jaw or temple, eye area with a left hook, or even to the body, and down Duarte goes. That's scenario one. Scenario two, which could happen as well, is scenario one of the greatest possibilities here is uh, that Duarte comes out and just starts digging on the body to Garcia and Garcia lowers his guard and wham, he gets cracked either with, with a straight right, a right hook or a left hook. Secondarily, to that or he gets cracked to the body and I'm going to tell you why that's, this is important and if he gets cracked to the body and boom he goes down uh, I'm worried about the second scenario what I just told you here uh, worried a whole lot about it because I am a Ryan Garcia fan uh, been highly disappointed on him, told the truth on him when I felt I needed to do that and haven't held back on it. But I'm, I'm still a fan of the guy. I like the fact that the guy is drawing so many millions of people to the sport. I really like that. Uh, now, what do I think is going to happen? And then our cautionary tale. I am thinking that Ryan Garcia will keep his distance and win the fight by a knockout in between the 6th and 8th round. That's my prediction, that Ryan Garcia wins by KO in between the 6th to the 8th round. All right. Now I'm going to 
and he's going to win it by left to the jaw or the side of the head. And that's what I think is going to happen. All right, now to the cautionary tale and the ignorance of trainers, managers, and handlers in boxing today. I want to tell all of you out there something. All of you. Every last one of you. Uh, because if you hear handlers of a boxer, which could be trainers, managers, whatever, uh, assistant managers, what, whatever, whatever it's involved in that, or experts talking about uh, don't don't about boxing. Uh, you probably buy into about twenty five percent of it because number one, no, nobody really knows what's going to happen in the fight. There's a lot of fights we pick right. You pick right. I pick right. Other people pick right. There's a lot of fights that hey, we are just convinced that this guy here is going to beat this other guy, and it don't happen. Uh, and it doesn't work out. Now I want to talk about something uh, concerning Ryan Garcia. And we'll get to the home hitting with me. Uh, because I've seen it happen to a world champ many, and I mean many years ago. Uh, a guy got ruined who shoulda, woulda, coulda been a household name. And it didn't happen. It didn't happen due to management and I want to talk about Garcia now. Uh, he shouldn't have took his fight with Tank Davis. Uh, not when he did. And Golden Boy was very foolish, and that, that trainer over there in California, the Hollywood trainer, that is a Hall of Famer, but I don't have much confidence in. I think he's a nice guy, uh, but uh, I wouldn't be going after him to train me uh, or my son or any of the other kids I got. Um uh, he's like a connection train and a connection by name train now just hang on with me you know it takes I'm old man you can't talk real clear it takes me a while to get something spit out but just hang on here when they put Garcia up against Tank Davis and Tank Davis being a lefty uh they should have told us all what we needed to needed to see. And we all lose sight of the past and history. We all lose it. I, I lose it a lot myself. You know, we all do. Uh, even going back to the Rocky movies, folks. If any of you watched the first Rocky movie, uh, you, you don't go get lefties to fight. Uh, it used to be a day in time everybody stayed away from them. It took them forever to get to a championship fight. I mean, almost forever in a day. Because nobody was stupid enough or ignorant enough that they just want to go in and, and, and get in uh, with a southpaw. Uh, number one, that, that she ain't nobody doing nothing about it. No damn body. And it frustrates the hell out of me. Uh, when your ass goes in to fight a lefty, it's double training for you. Uh, I mean, double training. If training camp's going to be eight weeks, it needs to be 16 weeks. Well, you're crazy. Yeah, I'm crazy like a fox. You're darn tootin', and I'm going to stay this way. And it seems to me today, the more people that think that I'm crazy, that's the bar I set to know, hey, I'm right here. Or I'm closer to the truth than, than they that are calling me crazy is. 
uh, try it. You'll see. <laughs> You'll see for yourself. But uh, Garcia ne never should have been put in there with Tank Davis at that point in time. And never should have been put in there when he wasn't listening to a trainer. And really, he didn't have a trainer that was telling him too much either. That was a two-way street there. So we can't put all that on Ryan Garcia. You, you had a, a fighter that was acting foolish with a, a foolish trainer. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend, but that's the way I see it. And I'll bank on the way I see it, by the way. And you got, uh, now what you got is uh, they're putting Garcia up against, and I think Gar uh, Garcia's got a great trainer right now. Uh, but you, you, you ain't going to go get a trainer that's going to make you a, good, a, be a better fighter right off the bat. It's just not going to happen. They can help you in many ways, but then they can't fix is if you've had problems all along and you got 20 or 30 fights and you got all these amateur fights you've had, uh, it is hard for somebody to come in. They can help you, but fixing all your problems? No, 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 no. And these guys are just jumping around today and it's just, it's out of ignorance. It's an ignorant person running to an ignorant person uh, thinking that the ignorant person can give them help and the ignorant person thinking that they can give them help. And it's just futile. It's just futile. Uh, I ain't saying you go to another trainer and you get, you know, got, you've had two or three different trainers that do something. A lot of times it helps. But it, it don't, it don't problem solve problems out of existence by no means. Now to management. I really don't think right now Garcia should be fighting this Duarte guy. Well, why is that? Because this boy can hit. And I don't think Garcia needs to be in the ring uh, coming off the crap he's come off of. Uh, this soon, getting in with a guy that can hit like this. And let me tell you what could be very possible. Duarte goes to him and nails him with a body shot, and Garcia goes down. That probably is it for Garcia. May not be his last fight. And I think that's what Bernard Hop Hopkins was trying to say. If you've been following the mess and the banging going on with the Garcia and Golden Boy promotions, but uh, very ignorant of these people to even put this boy in the ring with the guy they're putting him in there with. Because I have seen fighters ruined, and as a matter of fact, I've seen a world heavyweight champion ruined. Uh, Ace Miller and some fellas in, in Tennessee were handling and training Big John Tate, and they handled and, and trained him uh, in, in the amateurs. And, and these same people are people that came over to Charlotte and uh, worked with me as, as a younger guy. And uh, the great people, the great people. And uh, But Ace Miller made a critical mistake, and it, and it wasn't just him. It was a management team in Knoxville, Tennessee that did this with, with Big John Tate. Uh, they took a fight with a relatively inexperienced fighter. Oh, my God. And this guy became champion later on. I can't think of his name right now. John, well, John Tate uh, won the championship in a tournament in 79. And then in 1980, February, March, around in the springtime of 1980, he fought Mike Weaver. And Mike Weaver clocked him with, I believe, about 40 seconds to go in the 15th round. And John Tate had won every single round. 
every single round. John Tate had won. And Mike Weaver clocked him and knocked him out cold. Right at the dead end of the fight. So, what does the great management team do with Big John Tate? Uh, they put him in against, oh my God, I can't think of this guy's name. But if you go look Big John Tate up, you'll, you'll see who this guy is. Because Mike Tyson knocked him out later on uh, to take, I believe, the WBC belt in Tyson's quest to unify everything. And I just can't think of the guy's name. Larry Holmes ended up fighting him. Nobody liked this guy. And as a matter of fact, his nephew ended up murdering him over some st bad stuff that he that this guy had supposedly done. So this guy couldn't fight. He wasn't a boxer, but he was he, he could slug and he was a hard hitter. And John Tate got knocked out again with a wild punch. And it was the worst thing you can do coming off of something like that to go face one of the harder punchers in your division. Uh, whether they're ripe with experience, uh, whether they don't have experience, you don't come from getting a, I mean, a clean, you've got yourself cleanly knocked out. And especially you're on the, you're on the canvas for a minute or more, you don't go for your next fight and go in with a slugger, uh, a power puncher. It's just idiocy. It's just idi idiocy. And I don't think Garcia's people should have him in here with this Duarte guy right now. It's just, just too much to risk. Uh, however, we'll see what happens. Uh, we shall see. Uh, Garcia said, hey, my team, uh, my promoter, none of these people ain't doing nothing for me. They're working against me. And he said that in the press conference. Uh, seems to me they're working against him uh, for the reasons I just gave you. And uh, But I, I think Garcia can, is going to win this thing. I really, really do. Uh, but he shouldn't be in there with the hell of a puncher like this guy. In my opinion, because uh, this Duarte can he can hit he can nail you, and uh, it's very risky. So I just gave you the cautionary tale there, and uh, it was a damn shame what what happened to Big John Tate, and uh, I don't want to see something like that happen to anybody, any other fighter. Uh, there's ways of about to go about things. And uh, I'm just seeing so much ignorance in boxing today. Uh, hey, let's go out here and give every uh, strong Southpaw a chance at our championship. Uh, hey, uh, let's take our superstar and throw him in there with a Southpaw who is the champion. Gosh, come on. Uh, that doesn't have so many fights under his belt. So just a lot of things go on in boxing. You know, it's the sport most of us say we love to hate, and there's a lot of it. And, uh, but I'm going to tell you something. Another thing I want to talk about. People keep talking about fighters with egos. Uh, folks, if you're going to be fighting, you need to have a super big ego. Now, I'm not saying don't be humble. I'm not saying that, but you've got to have a super self-confident ego uh, with yourself to, to get in this ring and win championships. So that's another thing I'm hearing that people are saying. And uh, uh, I know a lot of us don't like the mouth we hear and things like that, but a lot of fighters, it's the only way they can get themselves worked up. Uh, you got to do what you got to do to get your own self worked up. And, uh, and there's a lot of psychology to upsetting another guy. So, uh, but today most fighters are, uh, so many fighters are unhinged up here. It don't take but nothing. You just look over at the guy wrong. Just look and give him a glare. 
during a press or whatever, where you see the guy out at another fight, and you can just wreck the whole guy's uh, psychology and then go in there and whoop his ass. That's not a hard thing to do today because the bottom line is a lot of people, they, they, they might have a lot of physical strength, right? Uh, but the guys that are working the hardest, oh, my God, that's so unfashioned. Uh, old fashioned. Uh, yeah, but it's right. The guys that are working the hardest, the guys that are pulling the double duty, the, the guys that uh, uh, are, are keeping that mind focused on what they need to do at the start of a camp, right on through to the end of the fight, are the guys that are champions. And the ones that aren't beating the hell out of their their own selves uh, when they're not in camp. And uh, boxing's not the sport for this mess. And I tell you, there's some guys coming up, and I give the warning. Uh, I see a lot of guys, a whole lot of them. And because I watch a lot of the amateur boxing as well. And most of the guys I see in the amateurs that they're not – very great amateur fighters, uh, they're going to be the damn headcrackers in all divisions. And they're going to come swooping through. There's a class of guys uh, fixing to come up about four or five years now. Maybe some of them one year, some of them two years. But on average, about four or five years from now, you're going to see some headcrackers that really work, that are really focused and uh, got reasons why I believe they're so getting so laser focused like they were in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Uh, but that's for another video. But uh, I believe that uh, Ryan Garcia is going to win this fight. Uh, I think he's going to win it by knockout. I do not see the fight under any scenario going the distance. Uh, but we shall see, because uh, uh, any, anything can happen in boxing. So God bless everybody. I hope everybody has a good weekend. Uh, to you young fighters, be careful the adults that's around you, handling you, working with you. Uh, be careful who you sign on with. And uh, dig really deep in that department. Hopefully you got family around you. Preferably a good, strong father, uh, daddy, that will step in and uh, make sure things are good and make sure things are right with you. So uh, God bless everybody, and we hope everybody has a good weekend. And we wish luck to uh, Dorte and Garcia. And we hope that both these boys come through here without getting hurt real bad or anything like that. Blessings to you all.